who is Yoshi and how does he fit into the story? Yoshi fits into the Doolittle story because Yoshi has an ailment, a very unique ailment. And in the height of the doctor's quest to uh, reach out to animals, he found Yoshi. He and his wife found Yoshi. And Yoshi is a polar bear. One would say Yoshi is a polar bear who's cold. I like to say Yoshi is a polar bear seeking warmth. So uh, when you learn about Yoshi, Yoshi is also a very positive, friendly, um, valuable asset who uses his talents and strengths to help. Um, how does one go about voicing, at the very least, a polar bear? Is that something you have to get into a mindset for? Uh, it's, it is, but that mindset is developed by the folks making the movie. So you trust your director, you trust those in production to give you viable advice of like, hey, this is kind of what we're thinking, this is how we want to shape this, because I may have an image in my head but if I just go off and do my own thing and it doesn't match the entirety of the live action animation, they might as well throw away my sound clips. It's really some, it's, it's really an exercise in trusting the process. Obviously, um, I'm guessing what you got to see were images of what he would eventually sort of look like. Did they also ever show you the physical performances on uh, from the set to be able to see how he how the performers who were bringing him to life on set move? Or was o there any of that? Only towards the very end. So you continue to give in chunks. Like you'll give your first effort and like then you think, oh wow, that was easy, I'm done. And then they're like, no, 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 we, we're gonna need this a, a bunch more. Yeah. Uh, but you continuously go back and it's almost like um, forever perfecting. You know, like you, you um, as the animation gets more and more locked uh, and the visual effects get more and more locked, they need sometimes a more, a different nuance or a different take, and sometimes you got to do the whole stuff over again. Mm -hmm. But that's never a problem. It's not really difficult work, and it is pretty speedy, and it's it's cool to see the movie develop. You get to see every phase of it. Um, is it, though, in any way a challenge to come up with the comedy angle without a direct co-star to feed off of? Is that a particular no. sort of skill you have to do? Uh, not really. So it's just a, a specific skill. That's a great way to put it. It is, a, I guess, a specific skill set because instead of having more in your environment to bounce off of and use, it literally is just your environment up here. So I guess the skill set is being a little more imaginative than you're used to. Um, what are you hoping people will take away from the movie? Uh, that's always a great question. What do I hope people take away? My answer is always the same. I want everyone that goes to see Doolittle to be entertained. And if they get a takeaway from seeing something after being entertained, that's really special. If they can identify with the family aspect of the film or um, the, the perseverance, the ability to not give up, uh, the uh, character arcs that, that happen, like all those, there's really interesting takeaways in the film that, that I can watch and I can have. But if you as a ticket buyer, if I tell you what to take away, I'm curating your experience. First and foremost, just go watch Doolittle and be entertained. So final question, what was your own history with Doolittle? Had you ever read the books? Had you seen the earlier movies? I'm a Doolittle noob. I had never seen the earlier installments. I had never uh, read the books, but I do find the narrative fascinating. I think all of us, or most all of us, look at animals, uh, creatures with such identifiable personality, and have that imaginative wonder of, what if they could hear me? and what would they say back? And I think that's why it's just an, an ageless tale.